Use the law of sines to solve the triangle ABC if angle A is 42 degrees, side A is 10 units, and side B is 7 units. Round to the tenths. When using the law of sines and given side side angle, there's a possibility of having no solution, one solution, or two solutions. We will discuss this as we go through the solution process. Let's use this triangle as the initial setup where we have angle A is 42 degrees, Side A, which is opposite angle A, has a length of 10 units. Let's call this angle B, and therefore side B has a length of seven units. We'll call this angle C and side C. Let's first determine the measure of angle B using the law of sines. The sine of 42 degrees divided by 10 must equal the sine of B divided by seven. And now from here we could cross multiply. Let's multiply both sides by seven to isolate sine b. If we multiply both sides by seven, we have seven sine 42 degrees divided by 10 equals sine b. And now to solve for b, we take the inverse sine of both sides of the equation, which gives us inverse sine of seven sine 42 degrees divided by 10 equals on the right side, Inverse sine of sine b simplifies perfectly to b. So now we go to the calculator and get a decimal approximation for the measure of angle b. It's important to make sure the calculator is in degree mode. We enter second sine for inverse sine. We need parentheses around the numerator of seven sine 42 degrees, and therefore we enter open parenthesis seven sine 42, close parenthesis for the sine function value, close parenthesis for the numerator, and then divided by 10, close parenthesis for the inverse sine function, and enter. At this point, if we were to get an error, we would know there is no solution or no possible triangle from the given information. But notice out here, if we round to the tenths place value, B is approximately 27.9 degrees. So because we found one angle on the calculator, we know there's at least one solution. Let's check to see if there are two solutions. Since A, the length of the side opposite the known angle, is greater than the length of the side across from the unknown angle, we are going to have only one solution. But let's check to see why this makes sense. Remember, the sine function value is positive in the first and second quadrants. So there's an obtuse angle in the second quadrant that has the same sine function value. Let's go ahead and find that. We found the angle of 27.9 degrees in the first quadrant. To find the obtuse angle in the second quadrant that has the same sine function value, we sketch a reference angle of 27.9 degrees in the second quadrant. And therefore the terminal side of the obtuse angle with the same sine function value would look like this, where again the reference angle is 27.9 degrees. And therefore the obtuse angle would be this angle here in standard position. So angle B could also be approximately 180 degrees minus the reference angle of 27.9 degrees, which gives us 152.1 degrees. But notice how if we take this obtuse angle and add it to the known angle of 42 degrees, the sum is greater than or equal to 180 degrees, and therefore it's not possible to have a second triangle where B is an obtuse angle. Remember, the sum of the interior angles of any triangle must be equal to 180 degrees. So there's only one solution where the triangle looks more like this and not like this where angle B is obtuse. So let's go ahead and record angle B is approximately 27.9 degrees. And now let's finish solving the triangle. Again, we know the sum of the interior angles must be 180 degrees and therefore angle C is going to be approximately since this is a rounded value, 180 degrees minus 42 degrees minus 27.9 degrees, which gives us C is approximately 110.1 degrees. So again, of course, the triangle is not to scale, but we do know we only have one solution. And now let's find the length of side C. When we use the law of sines to find the length of side C, Let's be sure to use angle A, since we know angle A is exactly 42 degrees. So to find the length of side C, 
Let's first use sine 42 degrees divided by 10 must equal the sine of 110.1 degrees divided by C. Now from here we could cross multiply, but instead let's clear the fractions from the equation by multiplying both sides by the least common denominator, which is 10C. So we'll multiply the left side by 10C and the right side by 10C. If it's helpful, we can write 10C as a fraction with the denominator of one. On the left, 10 divided by 10 simplifies to one, giving us C sine 42 degrees equals on the right, C divided by C simplifies to one, giving us 10 sine 110.1 degrees. And now to solve for C, we divide both sides by sine 42 degrees. Sine 42 degrees divided by itself simplifies to one. So C is equal to this quotient here. And now we'll go back to the calculator to get our decimal approximation. Again, we need the numerator in parentheses. So we have open parenthesis, 10 sine 110.1, close parenthesis for the sine function value, close parenthesis for the numerator, and then divided by sine 42 degrees. Enter. Running to the tenths place value, notice how there's a three in the hundredths place value, and therefore we round down, C is approximately 14.0. And now the triangle is solved. To summarize, we were given angle A is 42 degrees. We found angle B to be approximately 27.9 degrees. We found angle C to be approximately 110.1 degrees. We were given side A has a length of 10 and side B has a length of seven. And we found the length of side C is approximately 14.0 units. I hope you found this helpful.